After years of endless budget cuts that have impaired our defenses, I am calling for one of the largest defense spending increases in history. And by eliminating the sequester and the uncertainty it creates, we will make it easier for the Navy to plan for the future and thus to control costs and get the best deals for the taxpayer, which, of course, is very important, right? Got to get a good deal. We don't make a good deal, we're not doing our job. The same boat for less money. The same ship for less money. The same airplanes for less money. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. It means we're going to get more of them, and we can use them. Our military requires sustained, stable funding to meet the growing needs placed in our defense. Right now, our aging frontline strike and strike fighters, a whole aircraft, many, many aircraft, are often more likely to be down for maintenance than they are to be up in the sky. Our Navy is now the smallest it's been since, believe it or not, World War I. Don't worry. It's going to soon be the largest it's been. Don't worry. Think of that. Think of that. In these troubled times, our Navy is the smallest it's been since World War I. That's a long time ago. In fact, I just spoke with Navy and industry leaders and have discussed my plans to undertake a major expansion of our entire Navy fleet, including having the 12-carrier Navy we need. We also need more aircraft, modernized capabilities, and greater force levels. Additionally, we must vastly improve our cyber capabilities. This great rebuilding effort will create many jobs in Virginia and all across America, and it will also spur new technology and new innovation. America has always been the country that boldly leads the world into the future. And my budget will ensure we do so and continue to do exactly that.